My name is Jason Campbell. I'm co-owner of Camberg Engineering. Today I'm going to be showing you how to assemble and weld a rear suspension pivot box for one of our Kinetic Trophy trucks. The, in front of me are the component pieces to the pivot box. It's a pretty straightforward piece. It has an inner and an outer side plates, a top and a bottom inner plate which connect the side plates. It has reinforcement wraps that get welded on to the side plates and then two machine 4130 washers get welded to the lower part for the, the lower link pivot. The rear suspension pivot box is extremely important in our chassis. It's a structural component to the chassis as well as attaching the rear suspension to the chassis. And the rear suspension has extreme loads for off-road racing. The rear of the truck sees over 30 inches of moving wheel travel. So it's extremely critical that these are welded properly. So the first step in building these pivot boxes is going to be welding this 4130 washer onto the hole where the lower link pivot is. So with the Dynasty 350 is an awesome machine. Because it's an inverter-based machine, I can run much higher amperage, like the beginning of this process. I'm going to run, I'll go ahead and run 100 and 180 amps. With my old machine, I couldn't do that. It would pop the breaker. So it's really awesome that I can run higher amperage for longer duration without having to worry about the machine popping a breaker in the middle of a weld. So I've just completed welding the washers onto the side plates. So the next step in the process is going to be adding these doubler plates to the side plates. These doubler plates are going to add extra material for the bolt, for the upper pivot, and also distribute load from the upper, the upper pivots down the side plates, which will then trans transfer the load more into the chassis. Now we have our side plates here that have cooled off. We're going to begin to assemble the pivot box. First step I'm going to do is get on the back side here and clean off some of this, the heat marks and some of the oxidation around the edges from the heat. So I'm going to use the wire wheel here to do that. Now that we've got the oxidation off the back side and the scale, we can go ahead and assemble the part and start tacking it together. All right, now I've got the spacers installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the internal plates in. The internal plates will line up with these little nubs on here, the corresponding holes in the side plates to make assembly easier and more accurate. And then the top plate. Well, now I've got the pivot box uh, assembled and tacked together. I'm ready to begin welding. So I've completed the first pass, or what we call the root pass. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove, as you can see down, at, or actually over in here, all the scale on the top I need to get out of the way and any oxidation or scale on these welds here. So I'm going to use the wire wheel to go ahead and do that so I can do a cover pass. Now I've removed pretty much all the scale or oxidation off the welds, I'm going to go ahead and go for a second pass to the cover pass. The cover pass in this application is going to basically allow the stresses in the material to transfer from one piece of material to the other, acting almost like a gusset. So we're building up that material down in this fillet to create a nice radius. For the second pass on this machine, the, the cover pass, I'm going to go ahead and turn this machine down to 125 amps. 
and off we go. I've just completed welding the second pass or the cover pass on this pivot bracket for the rear suspension on our kinetic trucks. As you can see, the second pass right down in here created a nice radius fillet, which is going to help transfer the load, any load that goes to this part from one piece of material to the other without creating a stress riser in that joint where a crack could start. This part, again, is very critical because this is where the lower suspension link connects and the upper suspension link connects. And there's two different loads happening here. There's a torque load from the massive tires and the horsepower that's being put into this bracket, trying to twist it like this. So it's sustaining a, a tremendous amount of load in this direction. And then this upper point here is part of the upper uh, track rods, which basically hold the rear end in the center of the vehicle. So any side loads that you incur on the vehicle from sliding or jumping or landing weird is gonna be transferred directly into this pivot. That's why we have this doubler here to help make this a little bit thicker and we have this washer down here for any pull loads on the lower link. So here at Camberg, when building these kinetic trophy trucks, we spend a tremendous amount of time making sure each component is extremely strong and as well built as it can possibly be. And we try to keep them as lightweight as possible as well. But the main goal is for longevity. These trucks are extremely expensive and they're not disposable. People like to run them you know, for up to 10 years. So we want to make them as durable as possible for the consumer as well. So we spend a tremendous amount of time in the development and the construction of all the components that go into a kinetic truck. If you'd like more information or to see more photos on our kinetic trucks, go to camberg.com and click on kinetic trucks.